The Empty Stocking by Richard Curtis with illustrations by Rebecca Cobb. It was Christmas night, and Mr. and Mrs. Western were excited, as were their twins, Sam and Charlie, who were, despite their names, both girls. Sam was Samantha, and Charlie was Charlotte, but they were never called those names. They were always called Sam and Charlie. They were also always twins, both having been born on June the twenty-first, Midsummer's Day, seven years before. But their birthday was not the only thing about them. That was the same. They also looked exactly the same. Although, of course, people who really loved them could completely see the difference. Sam always wore her hair in pretty plaits, and Charlie had a little scar on her cheek, in the shape of a fork. But actually, as children, they couldn't be more different. And on Christmas night, there was a serious worry, because Sam was always very well behaved, and Charlie was, well, not to mince words, because this is basically what this story is about. Charlie was quite bad. Not really bad, but you know, very naughty. Not interested in being obedient, quite often very grumpy. Not very fond of telling the complete truth, but very fond of eating sweets, making a filthy racket, and having too much fun. Her parents, of course, still loved her to bits, loved her as much as Sam, because that's what parents do. But for instance. Her teachers found her very annoying, because she was particularly naughty at school. And her next door neighbors hated her, because she was very naughty at home. And shopkeepers didn't like her one bit, because she ate a lot of their sweets, and very rarely paid for them. Anyway, it was Christmas night. And as usual, the family watched Elf, which was just great. Then Dad read them the night before Christmas, which was very good. And How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which was even better. Then Mom sat at the piano and made them all sing "Santa Claus is Coming to Town." And as always, when they got to the bit. About Santa knowing whether you'd been good or bad, everybody couldn't help looking for just a moment in Charlie's direction, because this was a worry. There was no way Santa wouldn't know what Charlie had been up to this year. But as usual, when it got late, the children put out their stockings. At the end of their beds, and left a mince pie, a tangerine, and a glass of port for Santa by the chimney, and then headed off, very excited, to bed. And Charlie said to her dad, "Daddy, do you think Santa would bring me anything this year?" And her dad said, "Yes, of course he will, my darling." But there's no denying it; he was a little bit worried. Because this really had been Charlie's naughtiest year yet. What with the eating a whole box of chocolates incident, and the glue in the DVD episode, and the ice down the back of teacher's dress moment, and the worst things. Then Mom and Dad went upstairs to bed pretty early too, because they'd heard a story about a Mom and Dad. Who had stayed up late and actually bumped into Santa Claus on the stairs, and Santa Claus had scampered 
and they'd had to quickly fill stockings for their kids themselves to make up for Santa's hasty exit. So at ten past eleven, they got into their pajamas, turned off their lights, and, even though they whispered till midnight, at least they knew that Santa could get on with his job undisturbed. And of course, that's exactly what Santa did. At about one fifteen in the morning, he arrived in England from Spain. In a very good mood, because he was getting quite near home, he moved up swiftly from Kent, rushed through London, and sped on Suffolk, where good Sam and naughty Charlie lived. He landed in the garden, placed a hungry reindeer near a tasty hedge. By the way, look out for that next year, if you've got a garden. You will normally find that a bit of it had been mightily munched on Christmas morning, and then headed down the chimney into the living room. Dusting himself off, he crept past Mum and Dad's door, and into the room where the twins slept. And there he filled one stocking and left the other one completely empty. Because Charlie had indeed been very bad that year, he never liked doing it. But sometimes Santa has to get tough, and this year in Charlie and Sam's room was one of the get tough times. He then left their room quickly, drank a bit of port, gobbled the whole tangerine and the pie, swished up the chimney, and had it on. And left the house totally still. Mum and Dad had no idea of the terrible thing that had just happened. Neither did Sam or Charlie. One stocking hung light and empty, and the other swung with the weight of all the wonderful presents. For three hours, nothing moved. Not even a mouse, or a fox, or an owl. Or a badger, and then just by chance, as fate would have it, at four in the morning, naughty Charlie woke up, and looked down at the end of the bed and saw, a gorgeous full stocking. Because you see, Santa hadn't looked very carefully, and when Charlie and Sam were sleeping, you couldn't see Sam's plaits, and you couldn't see the scar. On Charlie's cheek, so they looked exactly and completely and utterly the same, with disastrous results. Charlie was thrilled about the stocking, and because she was quite naughty, she decided that she would go and sneak a peek at all her presents before everyone else woke up. But as she went down the bed. She looked across at her sister's bed and saw the empty stocking, and she stopped dead, and she just sat there and thought very hard with a big frown, because no one had ever really bothered to notice. But amongst all her naughtiness, Charlie really loved her sister, and sometimes. The actual reason she was naughty was because she loved making Sam happy. And sometimes, when she was really naughty, it was because she loved making Sam laugh. And sometimes, when she was really, really naughty, it was because other people had been picking on Sam, and Charlie was certainly not having that. And then Charlie thought about her sweet sister's face in the morning, when she'd reach for her stocking, all excited about the toys and sweets and games she'd find inside, and she would find nothing in it at all. She thought about how Sam would try to be brave, 
and how Sam's chin would start to wobble. And she thought about how she felt whenever Sam was sad. Not sad because Charlie had just sat on her, but really properly, in her heart, sad. And then very, very, very quietly, so she didn't wake up Sam, Naughty Charlie started to move presents from a full stocking into Sam's empty one. Present by present, one after the other, in a totally mathematical manner. Even if she really liked something, until both stockings were half full with exactly the same number of presents, because half was a lot better than nothing. And when she'd made completely sure each stocking was the same, Charlie breathed a sigh of relief and went back up her bed and back to sleep. And everything went quiet again at home, but not as it turns out on Santa's sleigh, because Santa was getting near the North Pole when suddenly something very unexpected happened. A light started to flash on his good bed o m e t e r the machine that told him which children had been good and which ones had been bad. And Santa looked very surprised indeed, because this had never happened before. There'd been a last-minute change. Forty-five minutes later, a very exhausted fat old man with a beard landed on a lawn in Suffolk with a very munched hat. And a minute later, he was on the stairs again. creeping towards the twins' room, and when he popped his head into the room, he saw the two half-filled stockings, and he smiled. And then swiftly, because it was getting very close to the time the children start to wake up, he filled up both stockings to the brim and crept back down the stairs. But just as he put his head in the chimney, he had one last thought. and headed back the stairs one last time and popped one last little thing into Charlie's stocking. Five minutes later, Santa flew away in the highest of spirits, and indeed, just like he used to in the old days, he hollered for all to hear, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night, which actually woke up good Sam. who looked down her bed and saw a completely full stocking, just as she expected. Then she looked across Naughty Charlie's bed, a little bit worried, but she saw, thank heavens, that her sister's stocking was completely full as well. So she walked Charlie, who for some reason Sam could never explain, looked very shocked indeed by their two full stockings. I suppose, Sam said to her mom later, it must be because Charlie didn't expect to get any presents at all this year. Then, Sam and Charlie both rushed into mom and dad's room and opened all their presents, one after another, and everyone was very happy indeed. But when the stockings were completely empty, Charlie happened to put her hand in. Just one more time, just to check. And she was surprised to find a small bright badge that looked a bit like Rudolph's nose. She never showed it to anyone because she was a bit embarrassed about it. But she always kept it because secretly, She was very proud of it, and secretly, although she knew she was sometimes very naughty indeed, she also thought it might be true. It just said two words, good girl. <laughs>